What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is all about the foundation, basically, to all music, which is the major scale. We're going to look at the five fingerings of the major scale, how we can practice those five fingerings to really get them under our hands, as well as how can we move across the whole fretboard to end up with a three octave major scale. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So major scale, like the title of today's video says, today's video is how we can dominate or master the major scale on the fingerboard. We're going to look at the five positions of the major scale that we should hopefully already know, as well as how can we practice those five positions to get those really under our fingers, as well as how can we make what would end up being a three octave major scale? So for example, how can we get from the low G on the third fret of the low E string all the way up to G on the 15th fret of the high E string, right? And how we can maneuver through the whole guitar to make a three octave scale. This is a topic I cover almost weekly on Zoom or Skype lessons because the major scale is so important. It opens up the guitar so much. And then by just doing some modifications, you can end up having a minor scale, a mixolydian scale, a lydian scale, and all the modes of the major scale. But today we're talking about the iconic major scale. So without further ado, let's look at our first fingering. We're gonna use our middle finger, third fret, low E string be in G major. And let's remember, G major has one sharp, which is F sharp. And when practicing your major scale, there is absolutely no rush. Take your time, make sure every note is clear and consistent. Our next fingering we'll look at is with our index finger. Right. This one may be a bit of a stretch given you're going from index, middle, ring on the low E string and on the A string. But again, take your time. There's absolutely no rush. And the slower you go, the more control you have. So there's no excess noise. There's no wrong notes. You're almost going so slow, you're thinking before you play. Right? Next thing we'll do is again with our pinky on the 10th fret of the A string. We can also go lower to G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, right? Triads. Our 
our next fingering of the major scale, which would be the fourth fingering, is with our middle finger again, 10th fret of the A string. Again, you can go lower. Right? And our last fingering for the major scale, which would be fingering number five, is with our pinky on the 15th fret of the low E string. Right then and there, we looked over the five positions. For me, these are how I say the five positions of the major scale. It's essentially caged, but yeah. <laughs> so next up, how can we practice those five positions to get those really under our fingers? Well, this is a little section from the Berkeley exam, right? So what they would do is say, play me the major scale, but from different degrees. Right, And that's when knowing the five positions comes in handy because it makes it more ergonomically correct as opposed to playing on one string or a different string. It just makes it easier because you can go lower like in some of the scales we did and it just makes it more efficient, let's say. So when you're practicing this part, this is just five, 10 minutes of your practice session. Say, okay, I'm gonna do G major scale, let's say uh, one octaves starting from the third degree, right? And you can say to yourself, the third degree is B, right? I have a B on the seventh fret of the low E string that I can do with my pinky, right? So I can do B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, one octave, right? Don't think modes yet. Just say, I'm playing a G major scale from the third degree. That's one way you can do it. You can also do it, let's say, with our index finger. So it'll be B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, right? Right, that's one way. Next, let's say, let's do C, let's do G major scale starting from the seventh degree. Seventh degree is F sharp. Right, there's one way you can do it. One, another way you can do it. This is when, like I said, knowing your five position, it just opens up where you can do it as opposed to being constricted to just one string. Another one, let's say, was, let's do a G major from the sixth degree. Sixth degree being E, right? This is where it becomes like more efficient. You can, if you want, start the E on the second fret of the D string and do E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. You can do it there. I mean, if you want to keep our root notes on the low E string, well, we can do it at that point. We can just do the 12th fret of the low E string. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. Right? We're basically already playing an E minor scale at that point. 
right? Let's say another one. Let's do G major starting from the second degree. Second degree being A. We can do A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Right, we can also do it. It's our middle finger, right? If we want to spice it up, we can do it with our index finger. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Right? Yes, we are playing modes, but when practicing, don't think of it like that. Just think of you're playing a G major scale starting from a different degree, right? And that'll open up the whole fretboard for you. You can play it everywhere because everyone's end goal basically is how you can just just dominate it. So practice slowly your major scale and just move around, right? Maybe even try a major scale on one string. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? A string. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? Let's do another D string. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. <laughs> now I'm singing. So major scale can just, yeah, you know, open up the whole fretboard. So now how can we see this as a three octave? scale, right? Again, we're going to move very slowly and we're going to say one of my favorite analogies, which is the guitar fretboard is like a roadmap. The five positions are essentially your GPS saying you're going to get home in five minutes. Just follow these directions, right? That's the positions. For three octaves, we could sort of forget those positions somewhat but just take a detour that may get us back on track to get us back home. I know, a lot of analogies. <laughs> so let's see how we can do a G major scale, three octaves. Remember, G major only has one sharp, and that being F sharp, right? Doing it like two octaves and then doing on the high E string. is very like not ergonomically nice or as efficient maybe. So let's go note by note and see how can we move around, right? We'll do it slowly. We'll do G, A, B, C. Now we did four notes on the low E string. One, two, three, four. Now let's go to the A string. D, E, F sharp, G, right? Now we just played one octave. Right, let's play one more octave. At this point, on the 10th fret of the A string, you have two options. You can go to the 12th fret A, or you can go to the 7th fret A on the D string. So let's go now 7th fret of the A string. Let's take it from the top. fret of the D string, at which point, again, you have two options. You can play the D, which is the next note, seventh fret of the G string, or if you want to move higher, you can do the twelfth fret of the D string. Right? D, E, F sharp, G, right? So now you play two octaves. From third fret low E string to twelfth fret G string, right? Right? Now for the third octave, now it's pretty self-explanatory. We can just slide from the 12th fret G to 14th fret G that A, and then do 12, 13, 15 B, 12, 
14, 15 on the high E string. And there we just slowly played G major three octaves. Let's see a different fingering, for example. Let's do to D on the fifth fret of the A string, slide up to E, seventh fret of the A string, F sharp, G, four, five on the D string. Then we can do to this B on the ninth fret of the D string, C, 10th fret of the D string, Right, a little different. Right? So that's how you can figure out how to maneuver three octaves. It's really just play maybe four or five notes and then see where the next note is in relation to where you are in the fretboard, right? So let's say if we start out, let's say a different scale, um, G from the 10th fret of the A string. Let's go up to the fourth degree, that C being 10th fret of the D string. Two, three, four. Our next note being D, right? And we have two Ds around us. The D on the seventh fret of the G string, or the D 12th fret of the D string. So let's go 12th fret D string. Right? Then you can do F sharp G. scale is everything on guitar because you can always relate it back to major scale whether you're in a minor key or you're in a mode just or in a minor mode whatever it all comes back to the major scale well all right guys that is today's video on the major scale like i said before this is a scale that we probably all learned in the first week of playing guitar right and I know, speaking for myself, I didn't really come to truly respect the major scale and really practice all this that we talked about in today's video till my first semester at Berkeley. Even till when I finished Berkeley, I was always trying to figure out how can I just maneuver on the fretboard with the major scale so I can just basically ignore patterns and just hit the right notes across the whole fingerboard, which is basically the ultimate end goal when figuring out these scales, right? We can start with patterns and we can really know what the intervals are, if they're sharps or flats, what are they, right? Start with patterns and then eventually get out of the pattern to just play freely and know that if I'm in the key of G, all I have to do is hit one sharp, which is F sharp. If I'm in the key of A, major, I can play any note I want as long as I'm playing a C sharp, an F sharp, and a G sharp, right? So ultimate freedom is the ultimate goal on the guitar fretboard. So with all that being said, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next one.